Sunday morning, family. It's Lady Mara with this week's VP News and Views. Vernon Park, we celebrate Christian marriages. Children's Church takes place every Sunday following praise and worship, excluding Fifth Sundays. On September 29th, we will have baby dedications and a baptism. The baptism will take place directly following service and the baby dedication will take place during service. If you have a child three years or younger, please call the church for more information. And if you are interested in being washed at the park, baptized. Also reach out to our church office at 708-753-1975. Family, our new content is live this week in Black History, Poetic Perspectives, Power of Prayer, See What I'm Saying, and It's Generational. Don't forget, get your submissions in for It's Generational, No Brag, Just Facts. So if you have a win, we want to hear about it. Email bparkcog at gmail.com with your story, 150 words or less than a few snapshots, and we will be sure to give you a shout out. Calling all members age 55 and older, you are officially a senior. Please take two to five minutes and complete our short survey. Just click the link in the September newsletter or scan the QR code on the flyer. And if you need help, hands-on help is on the way. So today, September 22nd, a team will assist you with completing your survey directly following service. Be sure to stop by. We also want to let you know that Age Options and their partner agencies offer free programs and services that make it possible for seniors to continue to live independently in their home. These include home delivered meals, assistance in applying for benefits, fall prevention, and other programs to help seniors take charge of their health. Age Options will be available to assist you in being more independent as you age. On Sunday, September 29th, attention all ladies, women of purpose, and the prayer ministry present Focus Forward. It's a fourth quarter virtual vision board event taking place on October the 5th at 11 o'clock with Navanya Rhodes. This event is free, fun, and from the comfort of your own home. Registration is not required. A Zoom link will be emailed to anyone who has attended a Women of Purpose or Prayer Ministry event in the last three months. Also, you'll find the link in the October newsletter. Ooh, you do not want to miss this. See you there. We are a family that prays together. Please keep the names on our sick list in your prayers. Minister Elise Henry, Sister Beth Murray, Sister Laureen Johnson, Sister Arlene Pierce, Brother Wilbur Pierce. That concludes our video announcements for news and views. Thank you for joining us. And let the church say, Amen, 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 Amen. amen. We're going to read a passage of scripture starting from in the book of Joshua, Joshua 1. We'll start at verse 9 and go through to verse 18. We're here celebrating today, Pastor Jay, Pastor January, 25 years of pastoring this church. Lord have mercy. Come on. Just to give a little more perspective on this, that's two and a half decades. That's 300 months. That's 9,125 days of leading, of preaching, teaching, counseling, being in meetings, organizing, planning, preparing, and visioning, and so much more. This man has stood through the ups and downs that has come with ministry. Vernon Park Church of God has stood and have been able to continue its ministry because God had a man yeah. 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 to be able to continue the ministry because this man didn't quit. This man didn't throw in the towel. 
through the constant transitions and changes in ministry that has happened, he has led this church up to this point in time. That's why we need to celebrate. That's why we need to rejoice today and look what God has done through this man, Pastor Jandy Word. Come on, let's give God a praise for that. Let's celebrate what God has done. Pastor January, you need to know that all that you have gone through, it has not been in vain. Oh yeah, it's been some tough times, it's been some hard times, it's been sometimes sleepless nights, but it's not in vain. Because God is getting ready to do a new thing. A new thing with you and through you. And I want to give the title of this message here today is shift to a new season for a new territory. Shift to a new season for a new territory. As we look at this chapter, it tells us that the time had come after the death of Moses, the prophet of, and the lawgiver of Israel, that God spoke to Joshua, Moses' assistant, the son of Nun, and told him to arise. Arise. Even in his time of mourning here, Joshua, because Moses the servant was dead, God told him to arise. Tell somebody, arise, arise, arise. God told him to arise. He was in a difficult place, but it was now time for him to move forward to the place that God had appointed for him. And this was a word of engagement. I need you to engage, Joshua. God calling for some here today to arise. It was also Joshua's time to be strong and courageous. God spoke to him. He said this three times, which signifies the importance that he understood this, especially in the challenges that he was facing. The difficult situation, be strong is a command. But also this was a word of encouragement to be strong and courageous. Tell somebody, be strong strong and courageous. courageous. You gotta be strong because this is a word that's needed if we're going to be a conqueror. You gotta be strong and you gotta be courageous. Amen, you can't be weak, but you gotta be strong and courageous. Amen, especially in ministry, Lord have mercy. Amen, you gotta be strong. And finally, God gave him a word of assurance. And the Lord told him, amen, my sister, that God says, I'll be with you. I'll be with you. you, Joshua and Israel was not going to be alone in this journey to advance. But the same God that was with Moses, that they understood God was with Moses. Amen. The same God who sent the plagues to Egypt. The same God who freed them from the bondage of Egypt. Egypt, the same God, amen, who, who opened up the Red Sea, uh, and the same God who, 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 who was feeding them uh, manna from heaven, yeah, yeah, yeah. the same God amen. that fed them so good and provided an all-you-can-eat dinner for them, yeah. all-you-can-eat quail dinner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody says, same God. Same God. Same God. The same God is going to be with you. I'm going to be with you, Joshua. So Joshua here is encouraged to know that God was going to be with him. And now this brings us now to the text here today because Joshua has been giving the direction and encouragement that he needs to move forward in faith by the word of the Lord spoken to him. He was not to compromise that word, but to meditate on it, speak on it, live by it. He also had to now communicate the word of God to the people of God. And his first job was to prepare the people for this would be the time for them to shift to a new season for a new territory that they were getting ready to take. And they would now have to get themselves ready. And I believe uh, that this church 
must now prepare yourself to shift in this new season and to take new territory. But you must prepare yourselves in three areas. And the first one is to get ready to chart a new course. The second thing is get ready for a change of lifestyle. And third is get ready to come into agreement. Yeah. And we're going to move quickly here today. First of all, to prepare to take new territory, you must first get ready to chart a new course. Tell someone, get ready, get ready. to chart a new course. Get ready, get ready to chart a new course. In verse 11 here in Joshua, it's clear in his instructions now to the people to inform them that they were getting ready to change their zip code. Yeah. Yeah. They were in one place, but they said, it was now time to get ready to change. They were not going to stay in that same place where they had been, and they had to prepare themselves to go into this new direction. See, they had been used to wandering around in the desert. As a whole generation passed and, and now there's a new generation that has emerged. And God said that it was time to cross over the Jordan and go into the promised land. A land that a whole generation could not go into before because of their constant disobedience. Yeah. Even Moses himself could not go into the land. But God promised remained to Abraham that there was a land flowing with milk and honey yes. that would be their inheritance. And now the people had to prepare themselves to go, and they couldn't stay camped out like they were before. Yes, but they would need a new mindset for a new mission. Yeah. The old way of thinking had to shift. Yes, yeah. Yeah. They had to shift their mindset from being a wanderer to being a warrior. I want you to get that. They had to shift their mind from being a wanderer to being a warrior. From being a camper to being a conqueror. Things had to change. You couldn't go in the, the, the same way because you're going to a new place. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You see, charting a new course, it can be exciting. I know y'all excited around here. Right. Yeah. Oh, yes. But it can be challenging at the same time. Yeah. Exciting because some things are new. And you know we like new things. Yeah. Oh, yes. Some things are new. But we also like old stuff. We like old stuff, and we, uh, we, we get comfortable. Yeah. You know, we love old clothes. Yeah. You love those old sweats that you throw on yeah. when you get to your house. Yeah. You get comfortable. It's warm, yeah. got holes in it, yeah. but you're comfortable. Yeah. You're not worried about anybody. You're not trying to please anybody. No, I'm at home. I'm comfortable. Y'all got the slippers where your toes are sticking out of them. But, but, they, but they are comfort slippers. And you don't want to get rid of it. That's the truth of the matter. So moving in a new direction can be a challenge because we like the comfortable place that we are in. Sometimes a comfortable place takes little effort. Little to no work. But V-P-C-O-G, you know who you are. Yeah. You must have to shift your mindset for a new mission. Yes, Come on. Yep. You must shift from being a wanderer to the warrior. Yeah. God is telling someone today, no more wandering. Yeah. Because God has made you a warrior. Oh. Tell somebody God has made you a warrior. Oh. Tell them God has made you a warrior. He's made you a war, no more camping. Oh yes, he's made you a conqueror through Christ. No longer just going in circles, 
but God is moving you towards a destiny, your destiny, and laying hold of your purpose by claiming the promises that God has over your life, claiming the promises that God has on this church. Yeah. 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 See, I'm here to declare to you that God has charted a new course for Vernon Park as he is going to shift some of you out of your comfort zones and shift you to the growth zone. Yes. He's going to shift you out of a comfort zone to a growth zone. And you can see here that in the comfort zone is the place where you feel safe. It's the place where you feel like I am in control. Yeah. The comfort zone is, 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 is the place that many of us don't really want to leave. Right. God is saying, no, I need you to come out of that zone. And then some of you are in the fear zone right now. And you lack the confidence. And sometimes you try to find those excuses of why you can't do what God is calling you to do. Because you scared. <laughs> what am I going to look like? What, what, what will people say about me? Understand, they're going to talk about you anyway. So you might as well just do what God wants you to do. Oh, yeah, they're going to they post this. I've long, been, been in ministry long enough to know the folks, everybody's going to say something. Because everybody got an opinion these days. About everything. So we have all of these excuses and we're worried about other. God says, I want to move you out of that. And some of you are starting to get into the, the learning zone. That's where you can deal with the challenges. You can deal with the problems. You acquire new skills. And you extend your, your out of this comfort zone. And you say, Lord, I want to learn. Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready to take that next step. And some of that next step is that growth zone. I'm ready to grow in you. This is where you find your purpose. Yeah, yeah, this, is, yeah. this is the place where, where, we, where you live your dreams and, and, and set new goals and, and conquer your objectives and fulfilling your God-given purpose yeah. and be everything that God's called you to be. Yeah. Right. If church, the reality is if most of us look at the clock, right. we all don't have a lot of time. So in other words, you, we better get busy doing what God has called us to do. We got to stop with the excuses. Well, I'm fearful. And start saying, Lord, I'm ready to grow up. Because see, you might be old, duh. You can be older, but not grown up. You stay in that comfort zone long enough, you'd be like a child. Yeah. An older child. Yeah. God said, no, I want to move us from this place. A place of growth. Yes. See, the truth of the matter is, it was hard for the eagle who was hanging out with the chickens most of his life. Because he was hanging out with the chickens for so long, he started eating like the chickens. The eagle was clucking like the chickens and, and, and barely flying like them. Amen, amen. But once he saw the other eagles and he saw them spreading their wings and flying high above the mountains and, and he saw that, that, the, the, that the, the other eagles were soaring, getting their food and not clucking, it was then that he realized Wait a minute, wait a minute. I am not a chicken. I am an eagle. I was created to fly. I, I wasn't created to cluck. Amen. On the ground, I was created to go up on high places. He was convinced and finally had to move out where, where the chickens were and started hanging out with the other eagles and started flying like the other eagles. I just wanted to let you know here today Amen. That Vernon Parker, y'all some 
eagles. But some of y'all need to stop plucking. You need to come out of some plucking thinking. You got chicken, you got chicken tenders. And everything is you want to hang out with chickens. God says, I've made you to be an eagle. You need to spread your wings and start flying on some higher places. Chickens on social media, listen to everything everybody's saying. Chicken thinking. God said, I, I got higher things for you. I got greater things for you. In other words, you got to do what you were always meant to do. You got to be who God has always meant for you to be. Vernon Park, I'm here to let you know. You're an eagle. Tell somebody you're an eagle. You're an eagle. Stop plucking. <laughs> got to get ready. Got to get ready. Get ready to chart a new course. Secondly, secondly, we got to move quickly here. We got to get ready for a change of lifestyle. You see, Joshua and the Israelites were used to living a certain lifestyle. Before they could go into the promised land, they were told to prepare by getting some food. And you see, 40 years they were being fed manna from heaven without fail. Oh, they had manna. The manna that they were eating was about to stop. Listen to this. It was getting ready to stop because God had told them that he would give them manna for a little while while they were in the desert. But it would cease and it would come to an end when they entered in the promised land. So you gotta understand that when you get to the king's table, that it's no longer manna time, but it's steak and potato time. Because for 40 years, all they had was manna. They had boiled manna. They had broiled manna. They had deep fried manna. They had steamed manna. They had grilled manna. Come on, they had barbecue manna. They had manna soup. They, they had manna stew. They had manna gumbo for you southerners. They had manna pot pie. They had manna in the morning, manna in the noonday, and manna. The manna was the desert diet. But now they were getting ready to move up to something a whole lot better. They were going to a land that was filled with milk and honey. Because what had worked in the wilderness would not suffice in the land of blessing. Don't miss that. Don't miss that. What was working before was not going to work where they were going. I've got to tell someone here today that the same thing applies to us today. Before we can enter into Canaan, we have to prepare for that land. Yeah. There must be some changes in our lives. The, the things that we, uh, uh, things that we uh, fed on must change. The entire scope of our lives must be altered to adjust to live in Canaan. You see, you can't hold on to past stuff and go into Canaan land. You can't keep your Chicago stuff and walk into Canaan. We can't live off uh, the Egyptian ways going into Canaan. You can't keep living on yesterday's moments for Canaan. This is why so many never really enjoy the victorious life because they are still hanging on to yesteryear. Now, it's okay to reflect and thank God for the past. But don't bring it to the future. Because some folks just keep looking back. Looking back until you get stuck like Lot's wife. You're a pillar of salt, good for nothing. 
But see, Pastor, I love the old songs we used to do. I love, oh, why don't we do this anymore? Why don't we do that anymore? But understand this, church, change is necessary. It's necessary to move forward. And some people refuse to make necessary changes to adjust to living in spiritual victory. Here's the real truth of the matter. If you expect to walk in victory, you will have to learn to walk by an entirely new set of rules. That's word-based and spirit-led. And there will even be times when you have to walk away from some stuff. There'll be some things, you might have to walk away from some people who are negative in everything that they do. Amen. And they're not here though. I know y'all don't criticize here. Y'all don't walk in and criticize. Why don't the pastor do this? Well, we should be doing this and we should be doing that. But sometimes you gotta walk away. Sometimes you gotta learn to shut people down. Because this is not where we're going. No, we don't need this here. But it's being led and guided by the Holy Spirit in everything that we do. It's living a spirit-controlled life. So you want to deal with the spirit. But we have to walk in the spirit-controlled life. You see, now more than ever before, you're going to have to be guided as a church by the Spirit. You gotta be guided by the Spirit. And this is where I want you to understand this is what I call GPS. Anybody have a GPS in their car? Yes. You have it on your phone? Yes. And what I call GPS is God's positioning system. So in everything that you do, church, it's guided by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will guide you and redirect you if needed. And that's how you must live your life. So wherever you go, and you know how it is when, matter of fact, uh, uh, Brother uh, Paul, who picked us up, and he picked us up, such a comfortable ride, <laughs> took such good care of us. That's my guy right there. And we were driving to the hotel. And we just driving and talking, having a great time. And we passed up where we were going, we didn't know. <laughs> Had to pull out the GPS. And it said, continue straight and make a U-turn. <laughs> and that's what we did. We had to follow what was how we were being guided by the GPS to get to our destination. And because of that, we turned around and we found where we needed to go. And see, some of us, we gotta live our lives that way. Yeah. You keep, we just keep going our own direction, doing what we want to do, versus being guided by the Spirit of God. Did I get everybody, everybody hear me? Yeah. Did we get everybody around the corner? Because we gotta be guided by the Holy Spirit. Amen. So that when we are going in the wrong direction, yes. the Holy Spirit says, uh, redirect. Yes, yes. You, need, you need to shut it down. You, you need to stop right here. The Holy Spirit, as we listen and obey, we can get to our destination. But the problem is, many of us keep going. And many times we're in conversations. And, and somebody is saying something off and we keep going and the Holy Spirit is in our ear, ears and saying, okay, shut this down, move away, get up, yeah. and, yeah. and we just keep going. So we're basically just walking and we're going off the cliff. Yeah. Turn around, make a U-turn right here. And when the Holy Spirit is talking, but we have to obey the Holy Spirit. But when we do so, he takes us to our destination. We got to our hotel, amen, and are able to enjoy ourselves because we turned around. Yes, yes, that's good. Thank God for the GPS. 
Thank God for God's positioning system. Some of you know about it because you were going off course. But God came in and turned you around and redirected your life. Amen. And you are where you are today only because the Holy Spirit guided you. But you must keep this in practice. I'm talking about your everyday life. When the Holy Spirit says, okay, time to get off social media now. Wait, 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 wait. It's time to pray. Hold on, I still got it's time. We got to listen to the voice yeah. of the Holy Spirit. Especially in familiar places. The Holy Spirit will guide and direct you in your ordinary life. Follow him. See, but that's the Canaan life. This is why I'm saying it to you because of where you're going, you're going to need the Holy Spirit to guide you in everything that you do. Please hear me, please hear me where God has taken this church. Amen. You're gonna to need to hear what the Spirit is saying. I understand change can be challenging for us, but it's necessary in Canaan. It's a new way of life. Canaan is, was not heaven on earth because there is no battles to fight, but it's a higher spiritual life. God wants to take you higher. He wants to take this church higher. So be prepared for change. A change of heart, a change of mind that's totally dependent upon God. It's walking in total obedience to the Spirit of God. And I believe as we walk in obedience, you'll begin to move higher and higher and higher. Tell somebody, get ready for change. Get ready for change. Get ready for change. And as we do that, as we chart a new course, as we get ready for change, finally, somebody say finally. finally. I'm coming to my landing here. Right. Get ready to come into agreement. Yeah. Get ready to come into agreement. You see, the people here, they were unified. They came into agreement on two fronts. So now Joshua addresses the tribe of Reuben and Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh. These tribes have gotten permission from Moses to remain east of the Jordan, just outside of the Promised Land. And their reason making this request is because they were uh, kind of dodging their responsibility. And the land east of the Jordan was a land that was good for raising cattle. But still, Joshua reminds them that they had promised to fight alongside their brethren until the land was conquered. Even though they had their land already, East of the Jordan, they agreed to help their brothers cross over the land, yes. to possess the land. And they also agreed in verse 16 to follow Joshua and encourage him to be strong and courageous. Yes. Just as God spoke to Joshua. And they echoed those words that Joshua spoke. And God has spoken to Joshua. So they supported the vision. And they basically said this, we are all in. Yeah. We're all in. Yeah. We're all in to what God is doing here. Yeah. And they were in perfect agreement. My God. They were in perfect agreement. You see, wherever there is perfect agreement mm -hmm. in God, yeah. nothing will be withheld from you. Did you hear that? Yeah. Wherever there's perfect agreement in God, nothing will be withheld from you. Amen. Church, Amen. when you're in agreement, you become a unified force. Yeah. And when it's lined up with the will of God, he blesses your endeavors. Yeah. Listen. You begin to conquer and take new territory. Mm -hmm. It's the power of agreement that made way for the Holy Spirit to come. Yeah. As you recall in the book of Acts, they were in one place and in what? One accord. Mm -hmm. They were in one place and one accord, and then the Bible says, and then suddenly. See, suddenly happens when you're in one accord. God begins to move when you're on one accord. Amen. He moves where there is unity. Suddenly. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. 
Suddenly, when Paul and Silas was in prison and they were just back worshiping the Lord in unity and in unison, that the prison doors were open because they were on one accord and they were in perfect agreement in their worship. For a house divided cannot stand. God doesn't want this church to be divided, but God wants you to be in agreement especially from what's coming your way. Jesus said in Matthew 18, 19, Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by the Father in heaven. He says, Surely I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Somebody needs to know this morning that the only way your spiritual victory is going to come is when you begin to submit, when you begin to agree. Amen. When you come together as one, amen, you will begin to move forward with much power. Somebody needs to know this morning. Amen. That God is working in the unity. He's working in the agreement. And just as they did with Moses, they'll have good success. That's when your blessing is going to come. Not when you're divided, but when you are together. When you're together in perfect agreement, that's when the blessing comes. It was Jesus when he prayed in the garden. He says, not my will but thy will be done. It's the prayer that he taught us to pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Jesus was in perfect agreement with his father. He said, let this cup pass from me. But he came to the place and he said, nevertheless. Somebody say, nevertheless. nevertheless. That's the prayer we all have to pray. Amen. It's nevertheless. When things are going crazy and going on and there's turmoil, we say, Lord, nevertheless, well, I want your will to be done. Nevertheless, God, I'm going to submit myself, God. Nevertheless, God, I want your will to be done and not mine. I have my opinions. But nevertheless. Nevertheless, God, I want your will. Your will is greater than my wants. It's got to be. It has to be greater. It has to be greater than our wants. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Church, as we prepare to close here today, I want you to understand that God wants to unify us in such a way that when we come into agreement with each other in the will of God, your faith will be ignited. And when your faith is ignited, amen, you're going to see the manifestation of the power of God, amen, you will witness what happens when you are in perfect agreement. I believe what will happen here is you're going to see just a greater manifestation that the spirit of God is going to move, amen, that even as you're in agreement, there's healing that can be released. There's deliverance that can happen when you are in agreement because you are the people of God. God has blessed you beyond God says, but I still have more in store for you. Lord, have mercy. Tell someone, God has more for us. Tell somebody, God has more for us. And yes, we have to get ready for some. I I have to say this is how the Spirit of God gave it to me. Church, we have to get ready for people to begin to flock to this place. And you're going to have to get ready for some of those people to come back. Oh, yeah. That's a hard thing. Lord, have mercy. It's a difficult thing. People have their reasons, as crazy as it is. People do some things that we get upset about, and rightfully so for some of these things. But God says, have mercy and have grace. Amen. 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 I know it's quiet now, but I I know where my church is. I'll be heading out this afternoon. (laughs) Have grace and have mercy. Because God says, I had grace on you. You didn't deserve to be where you are today. You didn't deserve somebody to give you a second 
It's time to give. Those of you that are watching our broadcast online via Facebook or YouTube, if this is your week to give your tithes and offering, you may do so via PayPal or Tithely. You can also mail your payment into our post office box located in the city of Glenwood or come up to the church office during our office hours, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. And if you're visiting with us, Please be sure to give your tithes to your church home. However, if this ministry has been a blessing to you and you'd like to sow a seed in good soil, we'll be sure you will receive a receipt for your contributions. God bless you. You can give through these portals on the screen as well. And thank you. May the peace of God 
and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with you from this day forward. In Jesus' name we pray. And let the church of God say, Amen. Amen. May God bless you.